In the side chapel here at Keeble, there hangs a painting, or rather, there hang two paintings. Holman Hunt's The Light of the World is one of the most famous, perhaps the most famous, work of the Pre-Raphaelites. In non-Covid times, it attracts visitors from all over the globe. The other painting hangs high up on the left side of the chapel, and many people barely notice it. It is the work of the 16th century Flemish painter, Willem Key, and bears the title, The Dead Christ Mourned by His Mother. It was given to the college by a science tutor, Dr William Hatchett Jackson, in memory of his father, sometime in the early part of the 20th century. The arrangement of the chairs in the side chapel means that I spend much more time looking at this painting than the light of the world. Every morning and evening, as we say our daily prayers, this is the image that catches my attention. And it is a striking and moving image. Christ's lifeless body, supported by his mother and friends, their eyes fixed on him whom they love. The bright colours of their clothes, reds, gold, blue, pinks and green, all standing in stark contrast to the white grave cloth and Christ's pallid skin. Because the painting hangs quite high up in the side chapel, as I look at it from my chair, my gaze is fixed on Christ's wounded side, the side pierced by a spear and still flowing with blood. The crowds asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and their bodies taken down. St John tells us, But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. So this is the image I find myself praying with at morning and evening prayer, this gaping wound and flowing blood. And it is here, in this pierced and bloody side, that I commend the church, the college, the world, all for whom I pray, because here, in this image of violence and death, we find life, hope and salvation. In a moment, you will hear some members of our chapel choir singing the ancient prayer, Soul of my Saviour, the Anima Christi. It has this verse. Strength and protection, may thy passion be. O blessed Jesus, hear and answer me. Deep in thy wounds, Lord, hide and shelter me, so shall I never, never part from thee. Deep in thy wounds, Lord, hide and shelter me. On this Good Friday, we are again confronted with senseless brutality, with the brokenness of fallen humanity, seen not only 2,000 years ago, but in our news every day. As we face pain and suffering, it is only in the wounded side of Christ that we can find healing and peace. He is the one who takes on our frail human weakness, and through anguish and death, he transforms it. Christ will burst from the tomb, light shining in the darkness, life overcoming death. But for now, all is silence. Christ's body beaten, pierced and bloody, Christ's body rests in his mother's arms, and our only prayer is this, deep in thy wounds, Lord, hide and shelter me.